I am so excited to introduce my guest today, Kelly O'Connell. She is the founder of Kind and Funny Brand Shop, where she builds dope-ass brands and iconic marketing for small businesses who are ready to grow. Her superpower is combining empathy and design excellence to showcase the unique brilliance of her clients. Embracing the no BS approach has allowed her to transform her life and own her mission of making the world a better place through authenticity and kindness. And that's really why I wanted to have Kelly here because Kelly is not just an incredible addition to our no BS community, um, but she is a shining example of what's possible for anybody out there because Kelly started with us when she basically didn't have a business. <laughs> and the leaps and bounds that she has um, come are just extraordinary. So we're going to talk about that today. Welcome, Kelly. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about your business? Like, who do you work with? Yes. And you said branding, but like, what services does that mean exactly? Of course. So Niching used to really trip me up at the beginning of the program. So I love answering this question now because what I say now is that my niche is cool people who are badass experts at what they do. When I was in the process of niching early on, industry niching didn't really excite me because I love being challenged and learning new things about all sorts of different fields. Um, but what I did know is that I wanted, I didn't want to be in a room with a ton of decision makers and jump through hoops. So niching down to work with one or two decision makers who are freaking baller at what they do allowed me enough focus within my niche to understand like how I could bring my expertise alive in the most authentic way. So for me, that means I work with a couple of art galleries, some realtors, a venture capitalist, a mortgage lender, a fashion designer, and a brewery. Um, so we do full-on brand projects. Um, so we create custom websites complete with creative direction for photo shoots, copywriting, social media, email, all of the things. Um, like all no BSers, we use the LP process to fully understand what our clients' hopes and dreams are, and then we deliver only what they need to move the needle and up-level their business. Amazing. And, you know, when you go to the Kind and Funny website, I think it's a shiny example of owning a brand and a vibe and why some companies, and I love that you explained the niching thing because I was the same way, right? I didn't want to just work with one industry. I find that there's a lot of, it's interesting to work with different industries, but that doesn't mean you can't niche. It doesn't yes. mean you can't be specific. And one of the ways you can be niched and specific is by having a really strong brand. And so, guys, right now, go to Kind and Funny and see <laughs> the badass brand that Kelly has because it's how you can not niche into an industry. First, I want to chat a little bit about your big win with this brewery because we actually talked about it a bunch on a coaching call. And I was wondering if you would share. Um, we went a little back and forth. You actually seemed like you were already headed in this direction, but we had to get Jen on board uh, yeah. <laughs> with the idea of not giving more information away. I was wondering if you could just share a little bit about what that experience was like and then how they ended up saying yes. Yeah. So I, I've had such success with LPs in the past. Um, so I knew the power of strategic thinking and writing and being able to really story tell through that brief was something that I was very confident already. So um, because this was the first project that Jed and I had done together, he had to kind of understand the power of words and that. And I had known that power. So it was just kind of bringing Jed along to know like, this is where the true value is. I know that we can deliver on the other end. And so putting other visuals or things that distract our potential client from saying yes is what we wanted to avoid. So there was just a lot of um, conversation around that, that philosophy and it, and it works. I mean, we didn't show them any type of visual. It was just off the brief. They were sold. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. So just for a little context, um, Kelly's been building this business. She's going to tell us about it in a minute, but Jed, your husband came on yes. as a partner uh, very recently. So he's been hearing about the no BS model, but he hasn't actually done it. And we were all on this coaching call last week and he really wanted to give them, he wanted to show them the visuals that he was like, once they see these visuals, how could they not say yes? And we were all like, don't do it, Jed. <laughs> and with Kelly too, Kelly was like, 
No, I know. We got to just get Jed on this train. And um, I share that it's such a good story because uh, even though Jed has been hearing Kelly doing this for so long, I understand that feeling of what it's like, but I've got these visuals and the visuals sell it, don't it? And I think people who are listening who have never done this process are probably thinking that too. How many people have come into this program and been like, so I can't even show a mood board or like just some ideas for my design? And we're like, no. No, none of that. No execution. I, and I was one of those people. So I Are you, remember. Were you? <laughs> and then, and then, like, I learned the philosophy, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, that makes so much sense." We don't want to distract them with the true goal. So yes, yes, it, it seems like it's a value add, and how could more not be better? But it actually can do the clients a disservice, make it harder for them to yes. say yes. Back when you joined us in the first uh, cohort, what what made you want to join us? Like, what were you? dealing with? What were your challenges or, or what what made you pull the trigger to join our community? Yes. So I left my full-time job in June of 2022. I was working for the Contemporary Art Museum in Denver for the past six years. I loved the job. I had learned everything and there was no place else for me to grow there. And so um, I knew that I wanted to do my own thing, but I didn't have any idea of what that was. So I knew I had the skills, the marketing and branding expertise that I'd built over my career, but thought I would figure it out. And like so many others, I'm a week into self-employment and Tia's no BS ad shows up in my algorithm. And then I'm drawn into your world. I signed up for your email list. I started following you on social and all of the information that you were sharing for free was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need. I needed the systems, I needed the community, and I needed the kind of framework for like what this looks like on a sustainable long-term level of um, not being a freelancer, but being a business owner. So I hopped in and I did it. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. We're about a year and a half later. And what does it look like now? Like what are you most excited about or proud of that's happened in your business? I love that part of the program so much focuses on celebrating wins because I am a huge person and advocate for that because I know that these wins add up and like they propel you forward. Starting Launchpad in June of 2022, one of my first wins was making that investment back within three months of the program. So I was like, okay, this feels good. And then um, in November of last year, I had my first 25K month. And then I was like, oh, this is real. I, I, oh, let's go. Um, so I knew at that time it was time for me to join Mastery so I could really learn about how to make this sustainable and really on the other end of things, like how I could do this forever because it's awesome and I love it. In the meantime, being in the, in the program and starting this business, I, started living my life again. I wasn't um, tied down to a nine to five desk job. I started reading books every day. I started doing art. I started focusing on moving my body and like really putting energy into my family and my relationships and living my life. Like that is what this program allowed me to do. And fast forward to now, 18 months later, um, my biggest accomplishment is that I brought Jed in, um, my husband, and convinced him to live the kind and funny lifestyle that I had kind of built and proved that this is a thing. And uh, he left his corporate job of 12 years and is is my partner in this now. Pia, you do such an amazing job of um, helping us dream big in the program, but not only dream big, but also put action plans on how we're going to achieve these dreams of ours. And one of my dreams that I probably wrote down that first week in the program is like bringing Jed in. And so the fact that I've done that is like, okay, what's next for me? What am I going to write down next? <laughs> oh my God. You just gave me the chills. Um, I, yeah, how amazing that you wrote that down early on and you did it. I love when we help people get their partners out of their nine to five jobs. <laughs> That's I've, I've done that a few times over the years and it's like so incredibly meaningful to me as somebody who has worked with my partner for so long. I just think there's something so special about 
when a couple can work together and build a business together in their life. And not everyone can do it, and that's yes. okay too. So not, not everyone wants to do it, but for those of us who like it, it's like such a meaningful experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I had the pleasure of hanging out with you guys in person at our last two retreats. Um, I actually had like a very long conversation with Jed at our last retreat in Miami <laughs> in October where, when he had, ju- like this was very, you know, this mm-hmm. just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just so fun to see his like excitement to like work with you and like him like coming on board with this whole philosophy, but he was just so into it. And you guys are just such a fun dynamic uh, <laughs> powerhouse couple. I, I'm so excited to see where you take this. Thank you. Yeah, it was amazing. Tell me a little bit about you and what your what you feel like your superpowers are in your business. I think I I touched on this a little. Like I love celebrating wins because uh I don't think we do that enough just in our culture and I think there's so much to celebrate and so much to be grateful for, so I love leading with that. I'm highly empathetic and really good at not being attached to expectation or things that we don't have control over. So going with the flow and like being comfortable in that flow. And I think just being positive in a mindset and being okay and in struggle and being a supportive person in the community is something that I am really passionate about. So those are some of my superpowers. <laughs> yeah, I would wholeheartedly agree. I just see you as this shining light of positivity and support for everybody that's around you. You just do that very naturally, but you don't just, you're not just like, rah, rah. You mm-hmm. obviously walk the walk and take action. And it's those two things together that make a really successful entrepreneur, in my opinion. It's very hard, I think, to uh, execute at a high level when your mindset isn't right or when you're not actively working on like looking forward with a growth mindset. So I just think that's um, so powerful. Everyone is so lucky to kind of, I think it's like just valuable to like be around that, <laughs> right? And like get that, see that, because you can see it's possible for you too. And I just want to be able to show people what's possible. I want to help people build a life that they love, just like I've gotten to build that life for me, Um, a life of freedom and curiosity and excitement. And that's really what my business has allowed me to do. And I know it's possible. And now that I know that, like, it's not just a fluke, I want to tell everyone. I want everyone to have the opportunity to build the life that they want because I know what it feels like when you do. Ah, that's amazing. And what's <laughs> what's next for you? Like, what is the long-term goal? Long-term goal is to continue to learn, continue to grow, um, fine-tune systems so it just becomes easier. Uh, maybe take a couple months of working from another country. I mean, now that we have this freedom and our business is is with us all the time. It's kind of cool to think about what that means for us um, as as a family. Also, long term goal is just to continue to be grateful every day for this because I get to wake up every day like so excited about what I'm doing and. Having that type of fulfillment and satisfaction on a daily basis is the goal. So sustaining that and being unafraid to see what what that means, um, not being too attached to the current path and just being open for for what comes because that's uh, that's what this business is offered, that type of freedom. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. I love that so much, Kelly. Thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you for sharing your story. You are such a rock star. Where can people find you? Um, okay. I think you already told them to check out my website, kindandfunny.com. And then yes. um, I'm active on Insta at Be Kind and Funny. And uh, it's a good time over there. We got some fashion. We got some fun. It's it's a good time. <laughs> yes, Kelly is always bringing the fashion. I feel like I have a photo of me and you, and you have a Cheeto. You oh. have a bejeweled Cheeto purse. <laughs> that that is correct. Awesome. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you so much, Kelly, for just being in our in our world. We adore you. Thank you. 